Welcome to the Interference in Thin Films and Spectra of Different Light Sources Laboratory Exercise. The title's quite a mouthful. This laboratory exercise has three parts. In the first two parts, you're going to be analysing photographs on the computer taken of interference patterns with different setups. And then in the third part, you're going to be using a digital spectrometer to measure the spectra coming from different common light sources. So the first two parts are about thin film interference. We've taken photographs for you where sodium light has been shone onto firstly a flat plate with a segment of a circle in glass placed on it. So there's an air gap in here. When the light comes in, some is going to be reflected off the bottom of the segment of the circle and some is going to go through and be reflected off the top of the piece of flat glass and that's going to cause an interference pattern. So there's a photo of that which you'll be analysing in the lab. You'll be taking measurements of the distance between the fringes. The actual physical setup is like this. This is the circular piece of glass. It's got a very large radius of curvature as you can see because it looks almost flat. Next you're going to be looking at a wedge. So this is just two pieces of glass. This is drawn in a very exaggerated manner. There's not very much air in between there at all as you can kind of see from the photograph. And so again, you'll be using the computer to work out the distance between fringes to work out, well, what's the angle of this air wedge here. So let's just have a bit of a closer look at the equipment and the computer that you'll be using now. In this experiment, you're going to need to open the photographs with the little microscope symbol here. So open the 1B experiments folder, choose the interference in thin films and then drag the Newton's ring folder onto the microscope. This will open it up in a program that will let you measure the distance between the rings. You're going to need to use the markings on the side to calibrate the readings so that you know how large these rings actually are in real life. In the last part of this experiment, you're going to be using the digital spectrometer to measure the spectrum of light coming out of a fluorescent light source, an LED, an incandescent light, and a spectral lamp. This is the same spectral lamp as you used in the diffraction gratings experiment just a few weeks ago. When you plug this cable into the digital spectrometer, you need to align the two white triangles. You'll then open the template on the computer, which will allow you to later fix, fit the plank fitting to this incandescent light. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this experiment and that it teaches you a lot about different light sources.